Gentlemen, welcome back to the T. Hanley Starting a Business, Building a Brand Vlog. This one, big number 143. So why don't we just, <clears throat> my voice, excuse me, why don't we just dive into this? I effed up and I apologize to the T. Hanley team collectively last Friday and I'm going to explain to you sort of a little bit more of the situation. So two vlogs ago, I talked about PR. And, and wasting $200,000 on potentially hiring, you know, a big wig, you know, PR agency. And, you know, at the time I was filming that as Rob, Kelly, Akin, and Cindy were in New York interviewing uh, PR agencies. And it wasn't just that those PR agencies, they had already been interviewing different PR agencies and having meetings and, and stuff like that. And while that was happening, I did this vlog where if you guys missed it, you can watch it. It was, it was, I didn't, I didn't pull many punches. I was very open. I was very aggressive and I was very honest on my opinions um, and my opinion on, on the usefulness of, of PR agencies. And as that sort of went out, you know, things started to fall into place in terms of Tiege Hanley and almost like it was like a domino effect. There are repercussions. There were repercussions of that vlog that I did not anticipate. And looking back, I am ashamed of myself for coming on that strong that early while something was unfolding. And here's the reason why. We are not a one, two, three, four, five man show at Tiege Hanley, right? It's not just me. It's not just Rob. It's not just, you know, Kelly. It's not the Alpha M show. It's not Aaron's opinion only. We have a team. I think right now we have like 12 or four, 12, I think, um, full-time employees. And each employee has a different role, has a different responsibility. And what each person does affects other people. And Cindy specifically, um, her job is as brand manager and she was tasked, um, I believe by, by Kelly to sort, sort of start to explore whether or not PR would be something beneficial to Tiege Hanley and, and to sort of set those meetings and to sort of do briefs and get the whole process going and, and handle it. And what happened as a result of me just coming out and just being like, bang, you know, yeah, PR sucks, we hate it, or I hate it, it's stupid, and if T. Shanley's gonna do it, we can do it, I'll be on board, but you're, I'm, I'm gonna tell you I told you so kind of thing. Or that's how it, how it came across. And so when I came out that strongly against something before all of the information, all of the details were sort of, you know, understood and sort of, you know, compartmentalized and computed and analyzed, it was, it was like, it was, it was shooting, it was, it was shooting ourselves in the foot because what happened, everybody's like, well, we can't do it now because everybody felt so much pressure because of how strongly I felt about it or the stance I took on it was so aggressive and so like, this sucks and here are 10 reasons why I think it sucks. Nobody wanted to touch it with the 10 foot pole and it, it, basically negated all of the hard work that one of our team members did in order to try and move us you know, in the right direction and gather as much information as possible. And so last Friday, we, had our, we have a team meeting. Every Friday, it's about an hour, hour and a half. And I called Kelly, I said, Kelly, let me, <laughs> can, I, can I start this meeting? Because there's something I need to say to the team. And I basically came on and, and, and apologized to everybody for me making a really tactical, poor decision. It was absolutely, in part, my, I guess, it, you know, admitting that you're wrong, admitting that you do something wrong is never fun. It's never easy. But it was more important that I sort of let everybody know that I effed up, man. I am sorry. I should not have done that. I should not have done that in the manner that I did it. I, have sh I should have waited two weeks. And, and, and discussed it. But by me coming out so opposed to it, so like in your face, it basically tainted it and it ruined it for everybody. Um, and, you know, now that we've gotten even more information, you know, my, my stance on PR has softened to a degree. And I know for a fact that in the next year, two years, 
T. Shanley will be utilizing to some degree. We don't know how much or how little. We will be utilizing a PR agency to some degree because there is value and apparently I don't know it all. <laughs> and so I wanted to apologize to you guys um, or just tell you sort of what happened or, or how it sort of unfolded, but it was a domino effect. And I guess the business lesson and takeaway, there are a few of them from my mistake. Number one is don't assume you know everything before you get all of the information. Number two is, is don't be so fixed and, and rigid in your ideology or thinking that you are opposed to hearing from other people and, and getting more information. And the third thing is understand that, that what you do and the decisions you make as a business owner, they affect everybody and everybody on your team. And you, like for me, I was representing Tish Hanley. You know, they give me, Rob Kelly, the chemist, the whole team, they give me a ton of flexibility filming this vlog. And they never know really what I'm going to talk about. You know, I'll reach out and be like, hey, are there any high level updates that I need to sort of get out or you think are important or the guys should know? But they give me a ton of freedom and flexibility, which is good. You know, it, it's, it's very open, it's very honest. The communication that you and I have is, 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 is amazing. And you have an insight into a business, a potentially humongous business, if, if everything goes as planned, you know, that, that most people don't have. But we're also starting this business and, and communicating and, 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 and talking to our customers and our friends, you, we decided to do something a little bit different. You know, we knew that if T. Hanley was going to be successful, it was going to be because of, of you primarily. And we felt like it was something and, and a chance for us to, you know, let you into our world and watch the process because it's very exciting. You know, we have very, very big aspirations for this company. And, you know, it, it's kind of crazy, but, but you think about it, you know, when you get, you know, some of these big companies, it's, it's, it's tricky, right? Because there's a lot of nuance. There's a lot of stuff that you don't necessarily want to air your dirty laundry and to everybody. And, you know, some things you need to keep sort of private. And we do, you know, I don't share all of the gory details of, of finances and numbers and all that stuff with you guys. And it's really not appropriate at this point. Um, last night I had a call with Robin Kelly and we were talking about, you know, what is like the, the outward facing goal of T. Shanley? Like what as owners, what's the real goal? Because up until this point, our goal seriously has just been, let's make the best company we possibly can. And, you know, hopefully the guys buy it. Hopefully guys love it and stay with it. And let's try to develop a culture. And we wanted to build the best company we can. We want to change the way people utilize skincare. We want to really revolutionize skincare and men and how men use skincare and take care of themselves and feel great about themselves and all sorts of incredible things. But we never really put a number on it. We never put a number on subscribers. We never put a number on like, you know, annual revenue. We never really sat down and discussed it as crazy as it may seem. We've had goals. We've had, we hope we can get here in terms of subscribers every day, every month, every year. Um, we hope to grow, you know, X percentage of this and that, but we never really put like, what is the bullseye? What is the target that we're shooting for? And yesterday, and the reason why we, I bring that up now, and the reason why I'm telling you about it is yesterday we had a kickoff meeting with this, this, this managerial system, this running, of, it, it's called EOS. It, it's, it's a form of running your company um, that is very strategic, very methodical, called, um, it's EOS, the Entrepreneur's Operating System. There's a book out there if you guys are interested, if you are in business, want to start a business, I would highly recommend looking at this. It basically breaks it down, nuts and bolts. This is what each person is responsible for. This is what each person um, needs to do in order to be successful. Like it pretty much details everything. And one of the reasons why you adopt EOS or the, the entrepreneurial operating system 
is because it cuts out a lot of the noise. You don't get bogged down with minutia. And that's one of the biggest issues that a business has. It's all of the noise, putting out fires. Well, this eliminates that and really helps you prioritize as a business and make sure that the people you have are in the roles that they should be in in order to succeed. And if everybody succeeds, then it will move our business forward. But we had a kickoff meeting. This is a, and, and to back up a little bit, um, there's a startup. The, the way that we sort of heard about this, I mean, it's a book. Rob had heard about it independently of Kelly, but Kelly was talking to one of the tenants in the space that we occupy at T. Shanley. It's called Farmer's Fridge, and it is one of the coolest things. It's these like salad vending machines, and they're blowing up. They started in Chicago. It's a small company, and they are expanding. Now they're in a few airports. They're, you know, they're just growing like crazy. And, and Kelly had become you know, pretty friendly with them and said, you know, they were talking just about business and they had referenced the fact that they hired a person to help them implement the EOS system and strategy in their business. And so they referred the person that helped them implement this system. They also recommended that you don't try and self-implement it because there are all sorts of issues with that and, and you really need a third party person that's unbiased to come in and sort of help you manage the transition into the system because it, it's different um, but it's it's a lot it's very effective and like I said I highly recommend you look into it a little bit further if you are somebody who is interested in running a business very streamlined very effectively very focused and uh, <laughs> it's like of course who is it right so we had a meeting yesterday, a kickoff meeting with this, this, this implement, this guy who is going to help potentially. We don't know if we're going to hire him or not um, because that is a whole other ball game. It's very expensive to hire somebody to help you as a company implement this. But he asked the question, what's the goal? Like, what is the, what is the five-year goal of Tiege Hanley? What is the 10-year goal? And we all kind of like, we're like danced around, but nobody knew like, like as an organization collectively what like the target is because you know it's it looks very different if you're trying to grow a business to be a very profitable successful business which we are with Tiege Hanley or you're looking to just grow a business just to sell it really quick you know sort of the dollar shave club model the there there are other a lot of other companies that are doing it you're raising money you're it's all about just customer acquisition getting tons and tons and tons and tons of subscribers but like we said, Dollar Shave Club, when they sold for a billion dollars, they had 2.5 million subscribers. They weren't profitable. They were losing money at that point because they had raised so much capital. But he asked, he said, you know, what is the goal? And, and I'm like, oh, to build a successful business, to be awesome, to kick everybody else's ass. Like, that's not real, like, quantifiable or, or tangible. And so I... Uh, after we got off the call and, and, and we had a little bit of time to sort of debrief and, and, and think things through a little bit, I, I called Rob and Kelly and said, hey, we got to talk about something. And, and we sat there and discussed, you know, okay, what is the target? Where is that number? What is the goal of Tiege Hanley that we all can be on board with? And everybody from, from, from the guys that are, that are, you know, packing the boxes, the shipping the boxes, to, you know, our retention people, to our, you know, SEO strategy, like everybody can be on one page and know what the goal, what the vision, we figured it out. We actually put a, 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 a subscriber number on the table and, and said, okay, this is what our goal is. This is how we're gonna do it. And if we're successful, we will. And at that point, we will be, a very, very, very successful business. And I said to the, the Rob and Kelly, I go, so can I just tell everybody what, and they're like, not yet, hold on, let, let's, uh, let us like kind of get this together, but I will be sharing sort of what our goals are with you in the very near future. Um, something else I'm gonna be sharing with you tomorrow, I've got a very, very, very exciting meeting right here at my office. Uh, my YouTube representative, that I've never met, that I've spoken to on the phone like three times, is actually coming to my office to sit down and we're having like an hour and a half meeting. I have no idea what we're talking about. All I know is that he was in town in Atlanta and he was like, yo, um, Aaron, would you be interested in, in getting together and meeting and just sort of, you know, talking? And I'm like, of course, this is 
so huge for me. Just being a YouTuber, I like YouTube is just like this, like it, it's it's abstract, right? Even though I upload videos, even though I know a little bit of what's going on, I don't know much. And I just recently in the past year have gotten like a phone number to somebody um, to, to contact and reach out if, if I have a problem or anything like that. And so I'm really excited. I'm super excited to sit down and talk to him. His name is Francis, which I just love the name Francis. It's just cool. And um, we're going to hang out and, and I have no idea what we're going to talk about. But I am going to talk to you about it and tell you a little bit more of, uh, of, of what goes on and what we talk about next week in the vlog. Um, but I think that's pretty much where I want to wrap it up, guys. It's, uh, it's been a great week, a lot of meetings. We have another meeting tonight that's going to be probably like an hour. Um, we have developed something called the Brand Book, the Teach Hanley Brand Book. It's a 75-page document that basically is, is it captures everything that is Tiege Hanley. Everything from our logos to who we are, to what fonts to use, to the colors you use, to you know, different collateral for, for you know, designers to use. And this is a book that we give to vendors or people that we hire to work with Tiege Hanley so they can understand the culture, the mantra, everything about Tiege Hanley. And this was such a humongous undertaking and Cindy has been heading it up and has crushed it and so today as a company we're going to be on a conference call and go through it page by page by page so that everybody the entire Tiege Hanley team knows knows where we stand knows what we're about and 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 we can see it in black and white but here's the other thing this document is living, it's breathing, it's morphing, it's changing. It's not like st set in stone, like this never changes. And so as things come up, as we develop, as we grow as a company, you know, we're going to be adding and, and, and changing it. Something else that the, um, the guy from the EOS, you know, sort of implementation team um, talked about yesterday was, you know, where, where do you see yourself? I, I mentioned that. It's crazy to think of, the fact that we've only really been selling Tiege Hanley for just over two years. And Kelly made the reference yesterday, it's like dog years, right? It's like even though we've been in business a very short time, we have gone through so many morphed iterations. Every aspect of our business ha ha has gone through so many changes and we've implemented so many things and we've tested so much and changed this and, and, and streamlined that. And, and it's just, it's crazy the difference that two years makes. It's crazy the difference six months makes for Tiege Hanley and our business, the, the way that we're growing, the way that we're changing, the way that we're streamlining, hiring, making sure that all the people are in the right places. It's crazy. It's very exciting and I am, we all are thrilled that you're along for the ride. But uh, I apologize that this video was a little bit rambling. I had a lot of things going on, a lot of things in my mind. Josh actually sent me a list of of things to cover. I'm going to end up trying to cover them next week. I also will answer some of your business related questions. Down in the comments guys, if you've got a T. Shanley business question or just a business question for your business, um, down in the comments, start the question with business question and I'll make sure to answer a few next week. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Tell a friend about us uh, because we're always trying to you know, grow this channel as well and, and, and help as many people as, as we can um, and hopefully you find this vlog useful and helpful and um, awesome like we do guys thanks so much for everything we'll see you soon bye bye